Well, hello there. Sorry for the lack of videos in the last two weeks. I was, uh, busy? You know what I didn't miss out on, though? Farming that sweet MGP from the Gold Saucer. You can use this currency to buy various mounts and glam gear. And if you follow some tips in this video, you're going to be able to farm around 150,000 to 200,000 MGP per week, depending on how well you do in the games. I'll show you the lazy way to get a good amount without spending hours grinding. One of the best ways to earn a good amount of MGP every single day is the game Mini Cactpod. You can find this next to the price claim attendant in the entrance square. This can be done daily and it revolves around revealing numbers and then selecting a row with a sum that yields a high reward as shown on the right side. There are programs and websites out there that will solve this for you, telling you exactly which numbers to reveal and which row to select. However, there's an easy strategy that I use. Realistically, you only care for the payouts for the sum 6, which is 10,000 MGP, or sum 24, which is 3,600 MGP. Everything else is peanuts, and it doesn't really matter. This means you only really need to scout for the combinations 1, 2, 3, or 7, 8, 9, which are the only combinations that can give you sum 6 or sum 24 in this game. To find these two easily, we use what I call the Y strategy. Simply reveal the numbers in a Y shape. Doesn't matter if it's upright or flipped. You can form a Y shape no matter which number is revealed first. This will show you at least one number in each row, basically allowing us to select either 1, 2, 3 or 7, 8, 9 if 1, 2, 3 is impossible. This way you'll always find sum 6 or sum 24 when they're available. Mini Cactpot's big brother is the Jumbo Cactpot, which you can do on a weekly basis. You can find this next to the Cactpot board Etherite. Over there you want to speak to the broker to enter the lottery. I always use the randomize button to fill out my ticket automatically, but maybe you have your magic number. You will always get back more MGP than you pay to enter because you get a consolation price. However, there's a chance that you win a lot more, so there's really no reason not to compete. The best guaranteed MGP payout every week is the fashion report. This is a weekly activity that you can participate in where you need to present your gear pieces to an NPC called Masked Rose in the Wonder Square. The challenge here is technically knowing which pieces fulfill the requirements of this week's challenge, but luckily the solution is posted on this Twitter account. So now all you have to do is find that picture on Fridays, find the easy 80 point pieces for this week, put them on, dye your gear and go collect your 60,000 MGP. This is a huge payout for the small amount of work required. Next up, we'll go through a few things in your challenge log, which is a great way of farming MGP due to relatively high payouts. First, Chocobo races. If you've never done a race, you can unlock it in the Chocobo Square, which can be accessed by talking to the lift operator in the entrance square. After you've unlocked them, you can queue for a race by going into your duty finder, gold saucer, random. Entering three races will earn you 5,000 MGP per week, no matter if you win or lose. Getting a win will give you an additional 5,000 MGP. Each race takes at most three minutes, and it's actually quite fun to do, especially with some friends. Kind of like scuffed Mario Kart. Also, you don't really need to worry about upgrading your Chocobo to receive this weekly payout, as you're able to get it either way. Oftentimes, you'll just get matched against bots, and over time, your starting Chocobo is automatically going to get better, at least to a degree. There's no real strategy here beyond pressing W and using your abilities. But even if you're bad at chocobo racing and you can't get your weekly win, you can still do 3 races and get 5000 MGP just for participating. Next up is participating in events called gates. These spawn every 20 minutes and can be accessed by talking to one of the gatekeepers that you can find scattered around the saucer. They will teleport you to a quest giver and there you can queue for various mini-games. Let's go through them one by one. First of all, Leap of Faith. Here you need to solve a jumping puzzle and collect treasures on the way for extra MGP. This is one of the most fun things to do in the saucer in my opinion. If you struggle here, a good tip is to target your character to see the circle around you. The default button for targeting yourself is F1. This will help you to know where your character can land and still be technically on the platform. Do keep in mind that this isn't your actual combat hitbox, which is actually just a tiny little dot under your character. When jumping to a platform connected to a wall, 
jump into the wall while also jumping up. This will stop you from overshooting and accidentally jumping over the platform, which I see a lot of sprouts do. There's also Air Force One, which is generally easy to do. I have no tips here beyond get good. I played too many FPS games to mess this up, but your experience may vary. Anyway, the wind blows is completely random, as the boss will sneeze, creating AoEs around the platform, and whoever gets hit will get knocked off. There isn't much you can do here, but there's one spot that many people recommend, and that's this twirly thing on the ground on the south side of the arena. This works for me maybe a quarter of the time, which isn't actually that bad considering it's completely RNG. The next gate on this list is the slices right. This is perhaps the hardest of the bunch, but let me break it down for you. Your Jimbo will descend down on the arena and start slicing bamboo stalks in pieces. And depending on the way he cuts them, they're going to fall in different shape AoEs. There are just three possibilities here though, so let's go through them. A single diagonal cut causes line AoEs on either side of the cut like this. A horizontal cut will cause a line AoE on the side that the cut is going down. And multiple cuts, no matter the shape, will always cause a circular AoE around the bamboo. It takes some practice, but once you know the shape of AoE that the different slices create, that's pretty straightforward. However, if you really just want to farm MGP and you don't care about the minigame at all, Try and scout the most experienced participants and then follow them around. You can get decent results even not knowing anything about this game. After a while, your Jimbo will summon Daigoro and a few gold piles. Looting a gold pile will give you 1000 MGP and you can loot up to two of them in the time frame that's given to you. However, Daigoro will jump from pile to pile even after the pile has been looted, knocking you off when you get hit. You can tell where he's going to jump by checking the direction he's facing. Sometime in, your Jimbo will start the cup mini game. Your Jimbo will shuffle the cups, one of them with a gold pile underneath them, and all you have to do here is pick one third of the arena to stand in. If you stand in the correct one, you get an additional MGP payout, one of them is safe without any payout, and the last one is going to get you knocked off the arena. Despite what a lot of people have told me, I still believe this is complete RNG. That's because the animation is the same every single time the game happens. And even looking at the video slowed down, it's pretty much impossible to track the gold pile. So I just follow my nose on this one. The last possible gate is Cliffhanger, which is perhaps the easiest of the bunch. All you have to do is jump your way up and avoid the bombs. Once you get the timing right, this is a free 3000 MGP in just a minute or two. Doing 5 gates per week and winning 3 of them will give you 13,000 MGP from the challenge lock alone and anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand for each gate, depending on how well you do. The gate event that spawns isn't entirely random. Every hour on the hour, the games will be Cliffhanger, Air Force One and Leap of Faith. 20 minutes past the hour will have a chance to spawn Anyway the Wind Blows, The Slice is Right and Leap of Faith and 40 minutes past the hour will spawn either Air Force One, Anyway the Wind Blows or Leap of Faith. If you are strictly going for wins for your challenge lock and don't care about which games you participate in, I recommend you visit the saucer every full hour for easy to do gates with pretty much guaranteed wins. Another gold saucer activity with a decent MGP payout is Triple Triad. This is basically a card game where you have to capture the opponent's cards by playing a card with a higher number adjacent to it. There are a ton of rules and additional game modes here and going in depth about the various rule sets is beyond the scope of this video, but I might invite the renowned triple triad addict Zed Leblin in my FC for a guide in the future if people are interested. The easy way to make some MGP without being good at triple triad is dueling any NPC in the card square. I always take on Jonas of the three spades and manage to get wins easily, despite being awful at triple triad. Playing and winning 10 matches will give you 13,000 MGP total inside your challenge log. This is a good payout and should definitely be on your weekly gold saucer to-do list if you're looking to farm as much as possible. There are other weekly challenge log activities, but in my opinion, those take a bit too much effort. Those being Lord of a Minion and Mahjong. There's nothing wrong with the MGP payout necessarily, so if you enjoy those too, you're free to add them to your weekly MGP farming list. 
But even without those two, you'll be able to farm between 150,000 and 200,000 MGP weekly. And that's assuming no luck on mini cactpot or jumbo cactpot. I usually plan my gold source activities around wait times, such as queues or waiting for people in party finder. The games only take a few moments to do, and you'll be ready once the queue pops. If I was super stripped for time or just didn't care about the gold saucer, I would just do the weekly fashion report, get the MGP from Wondrous Tales, and maybe do the Jumbo Cackpot, and all of that should already add up to around 100,000 MGP per week. For now, these were all the tips for farming MGP. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.